All right, ready to go. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Duiker, one of the Dapper community managers. And of course, I'm here to talk about Dapper. Maybe some of you guessed it already with, uh, with this hat. Uh, and Dapper is very useful for APIs for building secure and reliable microservices. So let's set a bit of a context first. So uh, if you're building distributed applications that involve many microservices and different kind of state stores and different kind of message brokers, um, then you run into some kind of developer challenges, right? Because you always have to think about certain things. One of the, these things is how you do like proper service orchestration, right? So how can you make like calls across different services in a reliable way? Um, how do you do like distributed tracing across services and also across message brokers? Another thing is how do you do like access control, right? So how do you define which service can call which other service, which service is allowed to um, and, uh, save some state to your database, and which service is allowed to publish on a topic, for instance. Um, and finally, how do you deal with resiliency? Yeah, because yeah, some things will always fail, and maybe some services are not available temporarily, or maybe a state store is unavailable for, for a moment. So how do you do then, how do you do retries, for instance? So if you're in this situation, then Dapper, the distributed application runtime, is really something for you. And on the right, you see our, our newly designed website. Definitely have a, have a look there later on. Um, Dapper runs in a sidecar, so it uses the sidecar pattern, and the sidecar takes care of the heavy lifting. So you just write your business logic in any language that you, that you want in your application, and the Dapper sidecar will take care of the security, the observability, and the resiliency. So if you look from Dapper from development to hosting, you can basically use any language to talk to the Dapper sidecar because the Dapper sidecar accepts like calls via HTTP or gRPC. We also have a couple of uh, client SDKs as well. So if you prefer to use a client uh, SDK, uh, please, please go for that. And Dapper offers like a very broad suite of different APIs that really speeds up microservice development. One of the newer ones is workflows. You can now write your workflows in code and do like service orchestration via workflows. And we also have like a pop-sub API, a service application API, a state management. You can do like the actor model and so on and so on. And with each release of Dapper, this, this API service gets bigger and bigger. And like I mentioned, Dapper has like built-in observability capabilities and security and uh, resiliency. And the nice thing is you can run it everywhere, right? Because it runs on Kubernetes, but you can also run it on VMs and you can run it on your local machine as well. The nice thing about Dapper is that the APIs are decoupled from the underlying infrastructure. So you can use the state management API in your uh, own uh, program, uh, but then you configure which underlying resource you use via component files. And these are just YAML files that describe the, the type of component that you're using, for instance, state management. Uh, but for local development, you can use like a local in-memory store, for instance, but if you push to production, then you can change one of these YAML files into something else to use like a um, um, yeah, cloud provider state store, for instance. So it's a, it's a really uh, diverse uh, application or yeah, framework to use. And there are over like 120 different components across all of the APIs. So here's like a very concrete example of how you would use your, your Dapper APIs in your, um, in your applications. So for instance, you have an application that's triggered by a Dapper input binding. Maybe you're receiving a message from, from a Kafka message broker. Uh, then in your application, you use the secrets API to retrieve a secret that you use in your application. Then you do uh, a call to uh, another application using the service-to-service uh, -service invocation API. That other application will use the configuration API to read some config values. Then uh, application A publishes a message to a topic using the publish endpoint. Then another Dapper service is subscribing to the same topic. And that Dapper service then posts some state using the state endpoint. And finally, we'll use a Dapper output binding to maybe send a message via Twilio, for instance. So this is just one of the many ways you can do, use and combine different Dapper APIs to really speed up microservice development. So about the product and the community, yeah, it's one of the biggest uh, CNCF projects. It's really cool. Uh, we, are, we are about to uh, go into the final graduation uh, state. It's been, um, been a proposal written for that now by, by Mark Fossil. So hopefully that will, uh, that will uh, be done this year. Uh, all of the uh, 120 components are, are provided by the community. So that, that's really great. Um, there's over 3,000 contributors, which is really awesome. And we have a very big Dapper Discord. So if you have questions, uh, please go to that Dapper Discord. So we have lots of, lots of Dapper users. These are the ones I can mention publicly. Uh, we, we know of many more users, but we, we cannot use their logo yet. Uh, but there's definitely some very big names that are using Dapper. Definitely uh, large enterprise users are using Dapper. There's also some Dapper case studies on the CNCF website. So definitely have a look if you want to read uh, more about how these uh, big enterprises are using Dapper. 
We're doing like three to four releases a year. So earlier this month, we had version 1.13. Um, so you can now use Go for workflow authoring, or you can use JavaScript for workflow authoring. And workflow authoring was already there for .NET and for Python and for Java, but now even more languages can, uh, can be beneficial of this uh, workflow authoring. You can now also use, uh, use the actor model in Rust. There's been a lot of performance improvements for the actor model in general as well. Um, and there's like a preview of um, component hot reloading. So that, doesn't, so that means you don't have to restart your, your application anymore uh, when you switch components. The next release will be 114, probably somewhere in June. Uh, the aim is to have like workflow as a stable API. Um, a new thing will be the distributed scheduler. So you can actually have schedule calls for, for doing scheduled uh, publishing, for instance. Um, and dynamic subscribe and unsubscribe from topics. There's many more resources online. Definitely check out the website. There's a YouTube channel. Uh, I'd also recommend you to go to the uh, GitHub for Depper Quick Starts. If you want to try out uh, some things really hands on yourself, go to the Quick Starts. Like I mentioned, there's a very big Discord with thousands of users if you want more information and some, some Q&A. Also, the maintainers are on Discord. And of course, we have like a Twitter or X handle as well. And uh, last but not least, there is a Depper game uh, these days. So if you want to play the Depper game, uh, come visit us at the DieGrid booth. We're now at App Developer Con, but we'll be in the expo for the rest of the KubeCon as well at K30. Thanks, everyone.